means application of audit procedure to less than 100 percent items. You see, if we apply certain procedures to all of the items, for example, if we take debtors for Mr. De uh, debtor A, for example, for that debtor we send it for physical verification. In other cases, we do for example, the subsequent uh, collections, yet with another you know we do aging. If we apply some of the procedure to all of the items, that means we have tested the 100 percent items and that is not sampling. When we give the chance to all the items in a population, the advantage is then, then we can project the, the errors that we have found in that particular sample to the entire population. This is the advantage. Now, except for statistical sampling, it is not necessary that all items must have equal chance, but it is essential that all items must have its non probability of selection that is important. All items must have a chance of being selected, but not necessarily equal chance of selection. So, ISA 530 simply when we have decided to use audit sampling, it has simply decide uh, gives us the objective that in order to provide a reasonable basis for the auditor to draw a conclusion about the population. What he should do? The objective of the auditor is to provide a reasonable basis for auditor to draw conclusion about the population from which sample is selected. Population, just an idea. Now, move to representative sample. See, so this is what we call a representative sample, where now what is not audit sampling? This is extremely important. As I said, test perform on 100 percent item of the population is not sampling. Likewise, selective testing is also not an audit uh, sampling, whichever particular significance. Why it does not qualify for sampling? You see, the, when we select certain items, that means we are not giving the chance to the rest of the items of being selected. So, that is the primary reason we say that selective testing is not a sampling. Okay. For example, during the audit of accounts receivable, the auditor applies procedure to receivables balances in excess of 50,000. The testing of receivable balances in excess of 50,000 constitute 100 percent testing of a sub population. Now, what we have done when we have selected certain items, we have actually created a sub population, we have done a stratification. Okay. Now, this is a bit different from stratified sampling. In there again when you when you make a strata, so again you, you add up the results, but in case of selective testing we do not do it. What we auditor do for example, in your example you, you will see about 50 million of debtors we select that these are the high value debtors and if the total debtors comprise of 75 million. So, we are very comfortable if we verify 50 million debtors of 10 million each. So, we are more comfortable, but in that sense in that in that case it is not an audit sampling again. Why? Because for that if you put it the entire population of 100 uh, for, for uh, sorry 75 million then we cannot form an our, form our opinion on the 75 million of debtors and say that look the debtors have been fairly stated. Okay. In our language, in uh, for our satisfaction and uh, our objective is met, so we do not care. Okay. Why? Because we are meeting the requirement of ISF 500 that we have obtained su sufficient appropriate audit evidence, but if you in order to make a sample the the sample has to be representative as I just show you uh, the, the items in the financial statements. Next. 
Now, non sampling test includes 100 percent examination of analytical procedures, inquiry, observations and of course, general procedures such as reading minutes and contracts. These items we cannot subject to test. That is the reason I said that we cannot say that the statement of financial position is itself a population. It is not a population because it is having a heterogeneous characters. It has debtors, it has creditors, it has stocks, it has fixed assets, etcetera, etcetera. Okay. Uh, these are the uh, various example. Walk through test also no sampling can be done. Other selective procedures of a specific items, key items we have discussed. Now, there is another terminology anomaly. What do we mean by anomaly? Any idea? It, it does not recur, it is a one off error anomaly. Now, why we are referring to anomaly here? Because when we get the results and if it is of a material amount, it has to be separated because this is not a representative error, it is a one off error. Of course, for the purpose of our conclusion later on after coming to the conclusion on the basis of population and after projecting, we do add this error to the rest of the errors in order to match it with our overall material, materiality level or the performance materiality whatever, be given a special consideration. So, we are clear about anomaly. So, we will treat it you know when we will be solving our uh, exercise. So, you will be getting uh, the you know just before the conclusion of the sem uh, seminar, you will be getting some material and uh, you will be getting uh, as I told you, you will be getting the random number table, how we you know calculate sample from random number sample, uh, random number uh, tables and also random number you can create in your uh, excel sheet also that we will discuss later on. Okay, so, now we are coming to sampling risk. What is the sampling risk? We start a business, we have a business risk has inherent risk. Then we introduce accounting and internal control system, we have a control risk. So, when we do sampling, we have a sampling risk. So, what is the sampling risk? Sampling risk is simply that the sample may not correspond to the population. Okay? It may not represent the population, that is the sampling risk. It is simply a difference between whatever results we arrive at from sampling and from the population. Okay? I mean, if we if for statistically speaking, the mean of population and a mean of, mean of sample is a variation. Now, that variation whether it is acceptable to us or not, that is a different thing. Okay? And that is the reason that we devise a certain risk percentages. Okay. Now, very simple example, if a bag contains 80 red balls and 20 white balls, what is our expectation? That the sample should be in the ratio of 8 is to 2, this is the ideal sample, because it represents both the red ball and white balls, 8 red balls and 2 white balls is acceptable. But what is the sampling risk? That a randomly selected sample of 10 would not consist of red and white ball in the same proportion, that is our sampling risk. Okay? To even simplify and talking in accountants term, that we have subjected certain stocks for you know sampling. And we came to the conclusion that the stocks are fairly steady on the basis of sample. But if we have put, if we have put the procedures to the entire population, the result would be different. It will be converse of it that the stocks are not, uh, stocks are materially misstated. So that is a sampling risk. Now you must all be aware of it that there are misstatement which affects the audit uh, effectiveness and audit efficiency. 